let's talk about rotoscoping. Roto what? Rotoscoping. I still don't, I don't. Rotoscoping. Sometimes you don't have a subject on a green screen to remove their background, but you'd still need to remove that background. Rotoscoping is the art of going through and actually isolating a subject from their existing background, thereby allowing things to pass behind them when previously it was just a singular piece of footage. Now, rotoscoping can be tedious. It can involve frame by frame adjustments to go through and ensure that your edges are right, but the payoff is rewarding. So we're gonna talk about the Roto Brush inside of After Effects. It's a specific tool that allows us to go through and outline our subject, and then to go frame by frame and remove and refine that edge. Knowing how to rotoscope allows you to have infinite possibilities when you're given footage from a client. If they give you footage and say, hey, can you remove that? Yes, I can, rotoscoping. So let's learn how to properly rotoscope inside of After Effects. I've given you a file to download from Canvas. It's called Boxer. It's an MP4 video file of a boxer in kind of a ready stance against a kind of complex background. Go ahead and download that now and import it into your project panel. Once you do that, go ahead and take the file from your project panel and drag it down to your timeline to create a brand new composition that matches the settings of the video. So we want to isolate the boxer from his background. And we're going to do this using rotoscoping because we don't have the boxer on a green screen or a blue screen. To start the rotoscoping process, we have to double click the layer name in our timeline panel to open it up in our layer tab. So go ahead and double click the boxer.mp4 to open it up inside of our layer tab. Now this is important because if we get out our roto brush tool, if you click and hold on that, we wanna make sure that we have the Roto Brush tool selected and not the Refine Edge tool. We'll come back to that later. But with our Roto Brush tool selected, we can see here that the, the green cursor is the Roto Brush tool interface. But if we come back to the Composition tab, the Roto Brush tool is still selected, but we don't see the option to do anything. So it can kind of be confusing. If you're in your Composition tab and you have the Roto Brush tool selected, it won't look like it's gonna do anything because it won't. The Roto Brush tool only works inside of our layer tab. Now a quick note on how to change the size of the Roto Brush. There's no bracket shortcuts or anything like that like Photoshop. If you start hitting brackets, you're gonna add in and out points that you don't wanna do. Hold Control or Command on the keyboard and then click and hold your mouse and then drag your mouse up to increase the size and drag your mouse down to decrease the size. So again, you hold Control or Command and then click and drag your mouse up or down to change the size. I'm gonna keep mine fairly small. So the goal here is to find our first frame that we wanna start roto brushing. I would not recommend trying to roto brush, this is like a 18, 17 second clip, I wouldn't recommend roto brushing much more than five seconds. You can, but your computer is going to be working for a very long time. This is immensely computer intensive. So if your computer is already kind of struggling with After Effects, Roto brushing will push it to its limit. So try to work with maybe three to five seconds, which is fine because in most cases, videos have shots that are less than five seconds long. In this case, I want to start at our zero second mark and I want to Roto brush. the first four seconds. So I'm gonna to come to four seconds and I'm going to hit N on my keyboard to mark my out. Now the in and the out points down here in our timeline is really just for our own understanding. You'll notice in the timeline that we have in our layer tab, the in and the out points are not represented there. But we do know that we wanna work around four seconds and we can see that mirrored here. So again, our playhead here is the same as our playhead down here, but the difference is that our work area is not represented in the timeline in our layer tab. So let's take our playhead and let's drag it to zero. This is gonna be our first frame. Now for all intents and purposes right now, I want you to pretend that this is a still image and we're in Photoshop using select and mask because the process is nearly identical. Now before we do anything, I wanna make sure that we're working in full resolution in this image because if we're working like half or quarter quality, the edges are gonna be half or quarter quality and that's not gonna help After Effects make a solid selection. So let's come back to our composition tab. Notice here that I've been working in half resolution. Change this to full. 
Now come back to your layer tab, and now we can start to work with our roto brush. If you didn't change this to full, you'd get a little warning banner at the bottom telling you to do so. So let's take our roto brush now, and let's start to paint around the edges of the boxer. Now we don't want to paint on the literal edge, because anything the roto brush touches, After Effects is going to assume we want in our selection, so we don't want to ever touch the background. Instead, we want to work inside of the subject. So I'm going to start down here on his torso. I'm just going to start to click and drag around, grabbing the things that I need and not being too picky on how accurate I'm being. Now I'm going to close my selection out. You don't have to. I've done it both ways. Uh, but I like to close my selection for good measure. So when I release my mouse, it now draws a purple line around my subject that After Effects has decided based on my selection accuracy. Now comes our chance to refine this selection. So obviously we still have our green plus for our roto brush. And I can sit here and kind of grab these other areas that perhaps it missed on my first pass. And we also have these areas that it grabbed that we didn't want it to grab. And this is where we want to remove from our selection. To do this, you hold Alt or Option on your keyboard. And notice how the green plus turns into a red minus when we hold that key down. That allows us now to paint off using red strokes those different areas that we didn't want. And again, holding Control and Command and clicking up or down changes the size of our brush. So I'm going to come in here, hold Alt, and just click once to remove that little triangle from in between his hand. Now you'll notice several things. One, it added a brand new effect in our Effect Controls panel. It's called the Rotor Brush and Refine Edge effect. So once we start to make a selection, it's going to add that effect automatically. And there's a whole bunch of settings here that we'll get to later on in this tutorial. We also have our different ways to view our selection. Down here at the bottom of the layer tab, we have these different um, like little human figures with different colored backgrounds. This is going to help us view this in different ways. Think of this like the view pull down and select and mask inside of Photoshop. So this first one here says toggle alpha. And this is going to show us kind of like the screen mat and the chroma key effect. It's going to show us the area that's selected versus the area that's being removed. White is selected, black is being removed. And we can see kind of the choppy edge here. It's not grabbing that super nicely. And we'll fix that here in a second. The second one toggles the alpha boundary. And the alpha boundary shows us the actual alpha or checkerboard background and the subject that we're keeping. The third one is kind of like that view pull down and select and mask. Anything that's red is not selected. Anything that's not red is selected. And so it's kind of just a different way of viewing it similar to this. So any combination of those is a handy way of viewing what you're doing and grabbing with your roto brush. Now we can also change the color of our line. If you don't like the, the line here being purple, you can change it to be whatever color you want by clicking the color window here and changing that color. You can also change the opacity with this slider here. If you're working with the alpha boundary color, with that selected, you can also change the color of that as well by again, clicking that color box and then changing the opacity slider. I'm gonna keep all mine at default, but again, if you have difficulty seeing various colors, it's a nice way of changing that. I'm gonna view this with my alpha overlay with the red color background. Now I wanna refine the edges here. If I zoom in on his arm, we can see some issues here where it's trying to grab the hair on his arm and it's doing so in a very choppy way. So this is where we have underneath our rotor brush tool in the toolbar, we have our refine edge tool. And if you grab that, it's no longer a green cursor, it's a blue cursor indicating the change of tool. And this allows us now to refine edges throughout our image. So if your image has a lot of hair or it has like a soft bodied object like a cat or another animal, the refine edge tool is really gonna help with that. Now again, you can change the size of this just the same as the rotor brush tool. If you hold control or command and drag your mouse up or down, that helps you change the size of your brush. I'm gonna keep it relatively small and I'm going to click and drag and paint over this boundary here. Now it changes the view automatically for me and it gives us a brand new box down here at the layer tab. And it says toggle and refine the edge x-ray. And so you can see here that when we made a refined edge, it kind of gives us that view as sort of an x-ray. And if we uncheck that, 
it basically turns it into a more fuzzy purple line, indicating that we've refined that edge. I personally prefer the fuzzy purple line than I do the x-ray. The x-ray just seems a bit more distracting and it changes the way it's viewed. It kind of desaturates everything. And I just, I, I don't know, I, this just makes more sense to me. But again, you have that option using that checkbox at the bottom of the layer tab. So we now have a nice refined edge along the hair and everything else is pretty hard in terms of its line. And that's good. So there's no white area showing, we've, we've gathered everything. This is a pretty good selection. Now we have to allow After Effects to do the heavy lifting. This is our first frame, but we have four seconds, almost over a hundred frames to get through. And this is gonna have to go frame by frame by frame, and it's gonna try to keep tracking these boundaries as he moves. Now he's boxing, so he's gonna be moving very quickly. And with fast movement comes motion blur, and the rotor brush can struggle a little bit with motion blur because its hard edges start to disappear. But once we let this track, we're gonna go back and make some refinings even after it's done. So let's go ahead and hit spacebar on the keyboard on our first frame and allow it to start working through this frame by frame. And we can see the frame counter down here. It's gonna work its way through. We're not gonna see our playhead move in our actual timeline panel. And as we go, we're gonna notice it's gonna start missing some areas. Like it's already missed his ear here and it's already neglected the area under his arms on certain frames. Don't pause and panic. We're gonna come through and change this later. Go ahead and just let it do its work on the front end. I'll speed this up so we can move on. Okay, once we get after our four second mark, I'm gonna hit the space bar. Now it will theoretically go through the entire image if we don't stop it. And so it, it really, again, it doesn't abide by our work area. The work area is just for our own reference. So I'm gonna hit space bar and stop it. I did five seconds just for good measure, but four seconds is fine too. And so we can see this green line now indicates the areas that have been processed. Everything that's gray would still need to be chunked through. If I take my playhead and start to scrub through this, we can see our line tracking. And overall, it does a decent job. You can see what I mean here with the motion blur. It starts to kind of forget what his arm looked like. And there's an area here that got super weird with the refine edge, not sure what happened to there. So now we have some problem frames to come through and we have to start refining. And this is where rotor brushing can be tedious because we have to go through now and refine any areas that were a problem. Is this technically done? Yeah, we could be done right now and just add our background in the composition tab and call it finished. But the end result is not gonna look good. So this next part really will help us make things look as good as they can. So in the next tutorial, we'll refine this selection, but that's the basics of the rotor brush tool. We double click the layer in the timeline, open it up. We use the rotor brush tool to define our selection boundaries. We refine that edge and we let After Effects do the heavy lifting to track that subject the best we can. Mm -hmm.